Welcome to Healthy Living. Today's topic, superbugs, what they are, how they got here, and what to do about them. When we think about our most serious health threats, do infections come to mind? Doctors say within the next 30 years, millions will die from simple infections because the drugs we've depended on to kill these infections will no longer work. In fact, we're already starting to see it. Imagine a child dying from a simple scrape that becomes infected. Sound far-fetched? Shame on us if we wait for there to be bodies in the street before we step up to the plate and really begin to address this situation. For the last 70 years, antibiotics have done a great job killing our worst bacterial infections, like E. coli, staph, even the plague. But now we're seeing stronger, more resilient strains of bacteria that antibiotics cannot kill. They're called superbugs. An alarming CDC report reveals these drug-resistant superbugs infect around 2 million Americans each year, killing 23,000. At the top of the list, C. diff, a bacterial infection that targets the intestinal tract and kills 14,000 people a year. That's followed by drug-resistant gonorrhea, an infection making up about a third of the cases of this sexually transmitted disease. And CRE, a respiratory bacteria infecting 9,000 hospital patients a year, killing half of them. Pitts says bacteria build resistance to antibiotics because doctors overprescribe them. Antibiotics only work against bacterial infections. The vast majority of patients seen by doctors have viral infections, a major difference in the medical world. Still, patients often push for a cure, and doctors usually prescribe an antibiotic even though it isn't often necessary. And when a patient comes in or you know, a, a mother or a dad brings in a child with an earache and the child is crying and screaming, and the parent wants a prescription, and they know that antibiotics just broadly might be of value, the doctor thinks to herself, you know, I, I know that an antibiotic is not going to help this child, but it will give the parent what they want, and it's not going to do any harm. And the fact is it does tremendous harm. Another reason for this liberal prescription policy is because it can take too long to determine the type of infection. So right now, unfortunately, the diagnostics still require a day or two or three you know, to properly understand if it is, in fact, a, a bacteria that can be treated with an antibiotic. So a lot of doctors will say, well, prophylactically, I'm going to give you an antibiotic. People with superbugs often receive what's known as antibiotics of last resort, which carry devastating side effects. Where not only are you uh, nauseous all the time, uh, but you really can't function. You're in, you're in bed. You're completely weak. You know, it's like having the worst flu you've ever had for a very long time, hoping that it works. Because a lot of times people who develop these antibiotic-resistant uh, bacteria don't get treated one time. Doctors have to continually experiment with more and more potent antibiotics as a cocktail to find out what works. These antibiotics severely disrupt the immune system, making the patient vulnerable to future infections. So if you allow kind of more mild antibiotics to become ineffective, and even those impact gut flora, and you move into more potent antibiotics, it's going to impact it even more, and that's worse. Superbugs are often contracted where you think you'd be most protected, hospitals. People going into hospitals for an appendectomy for a relatively minor operation, otherwise completely healthy, and walking out with a very tough bacteria, hospital-acquired infection that requires extremely potent antibiotics with very nasty side effects, and sometimes they get cured and sometimes they don't. Health experts say another huge cause of drug-resistant bacteria are the antibiotics given to animals raised for food. In fact, animals receive 80% of all antibiotics, and much of that goes into their food. It is um, being found that if you give them some antibiotics in their feed, which they don't need for infection, it makes them bigger, quicker, so they can be sold to the market quicker. So it's a, it's a more of an economic issue than animal health issue. 
The FDA says antibiotic resistant germs from food animals can contaminate the meat from that animal, but also get into the environment, like water and soil from animal manure. While food animal producers admit antibiotics do make the animals larger faster, they argue the antibiotics are necessary for the health of the animals. Recently, we sat down with a doctor who's on the front lines of the superbug crisis. Dr. Matt McCarthy is an infectious disease doctor at New York Presbyterian Hospital, where the world's toughest infections are sent for treatment. In his new book, Superbugs, he sounds an alarm. The most important medical issue that we're going to be confronting over the next 30 years is the development of these superbugs. They're expected to kill 10 million people worldwide every single year by 2050. And the way that we can reverse this, the way that we can prevent that, is if we invest now. The challenge is that there are going to be a host of um, suggestions and proposals on the table to fix this. Some of those are going to be great proposals and some of those are not going to be great. They're going to be crazy proposals that will cause the government to step in in places that it shouldn't. So what we're trying to do is figure out what are the smart places to invest now. And we're doing the research so that we understand what the problem is and more importantly, how we can solve it. Dr. McCarthy says we have to act now because the bugs are mutating quickly. This is one of the most dramatic shifts I've seen in my medical career. Um, when I started off, many of the urinary tract infections that I was treating could be treated with an oral antibiotic, with a simple pill. And then there was this shift where the bacteria figured out how to get around those pills and we required intravenous treatment. And then over the past five years, one of the most discouraging things I've seen is that the bacteria are evading even the intravenous treatments. And the reason is that they have figured out ways to mutate. They can develop these things called efflux pumps, which are essentially microscopic vacuum cleaners, which can suck up any antibiotic we give and spit it out. And so what we're trying to do is come up with new ways to treat antibiotics, ways that are, uh, they haven't even thought of um, trying yet, that we can figure out how to get rid of these very difficult urinary tract infections in a way that's safe um, and also uh, ethically responsible and so that we don't put patients at risk by trying out drugs that are dangerous. Dr. McCarthy says far too many patients with infections that used to be cured with just a prescription of a mild antibiotic are now finding those drugs don't cure the infection. So they go back to the doctor time after time trying different antibiotics until they find one that works. This is one of the challenges we see now is that patients are prescribed antibiotics and they're given a 10-day course uh, of treatment and on day 10 they say, I don't feel any better, what do I do? And they come back to the doctor who now increasingly recommends that the patient go to the emergency room uh, where an infectious disease specialist may recommend an intravenous treatment. And what we're seeing is that patients are getting treated longer and longer because the initial treatment wasn't working. And that's because the bacteria are figuring out ways to evade all of the things we're throwing at them. So what we're trying to do is meet the problem head on and come up with the right treatment right off the bat. Rather than trying out a pill that may or may not work, we want to know what does work. The problem with this is that the drugs that are we known to work are very expensive. Uh, and we're trying to figure out a way to use these very expensive drugs responsibly uh, such that we don't drive up the cost of health care. Uh, but as a doctor, when I'm treating a patient who's infected and scared, I'm not thinking about driving up the cost of health care. I'm thinking about how do I get somebody better immediately. When a patient with an infection first sees a doctor, often the physician will prescribe a mild antibiotic, and if that doesn't work, will gradually progress to a stronger one. However, that's a process that causes the patient a lot of stress and drags out recovery time. So to combat this problem, sometimes doctors go straight for the high-powered antibiotic, but that also has its drawbacks. So. One of the challenges here is that some of these infections are hard to pick up. Some superbug infections are subtle, others are not. And you have a case where doctors are often guessing what's the best antibiotic to use. And when you're not certain, you may use one of the more powerful antibiotics. The downside of that is that it exposes bacteria to our best drugs and they have the opportunity then 
to figure out ways to evade these things. So a crucial part of the fight against superbugs is coming up with better diagnostic tests, better ways to identify these infections so that we know exactly what we're treating so that doctors are no longer guessing. Coming up, what's standing in the way of developing new antibiotics? Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. I liked your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible. Available at CBN.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a better gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. Here, we're committed to a heritage of rigorous scholarship dating back over a thousand years. And to a faith tradition dating back a thousand more. This is how we create a culture of inquiry where no topic is off limits. And a culture of hope. Anything's possible! It's Christian leadership. And it's changing the world for the better. It's higher learning. It's greater knowing. It's what makes us whole. It's what makes us regent. Patients and doctors are finding out the hard way that more and more the antibiotics that used to easily cure common infections aren't working anymore. The infection worsens and instead of going to the doctor's office, the patient now needs to go to the hospital emergency room. Going to the emergency room with an infection uh, is an unpredictable experience. Uh, depending on the type of infection and depending on the type of the hospital, you may encounter a doctor who knows exactly what to do right off the bat. An emergency room physician may say, I got this, and prescribe you an antibiotic and send you on your way. Um, but for many patients, that isn't the case, and they require um, an infectious disease specialist to come. And that specialist may say, we're going to need to put in um, a PICC line, which is a large IV, so that you can receive weeks and weeks of antibiotics. And for many of the patients, they say, I don't really want weeks and weeks of antibiotics. I need to get back to work. I, need, I have kids to take care of. And so what we're trying to do is figure out, are there ways to give drugs that could limit hospitalization um, and develop drugs that can stay in the system for so long that we don't have to give them intravenously in a hospital for weeks and weeks and get people back to their normal lives. And that's really what I'm most interested in doing. Dr. McCarthy adds that all these new drug-resistant infections are adding to the burden placed on hospitals. Hospital overcrowding is a perennial problem. Um, I know patients who wait 24 hours, 30 hours, 36 hours in the emergency room waiting for a bed. And we're always looking for ways to increase the flow of patients, uh, get patients out more quickly, but that's a, a fine balance because you don't want to discharge someone prematurely. And so one of the most important things I do as a doctor is figuring out every day who needs to be hospitalized and who can go home or who could go to a nursing facility from the hospital. And these drug resistant infections are causing patients to stay in the hospital far longer than we ever anticipated and it is contributing dramatically to an increase in the length of hospitalization. Uh, the next time you go to an emergency room and you have to wait 24 hours to get a bed, it may be because all of the hospital beds are filled with patients who are suffering from these infections. So it doesn't just inf affect the patients who have these infections, it affects all of us. 
Most antibiotics used today were developed decades ago. The bacteria that cause infections have encountered these drugs so many times that the bugs have built up defenses against the drugs. Health experts say we simply need new antibiotics ones the bacteria don't recognize. But that's easier said than done. Superbugs are becoming the primary medical issue that we're going to be focusing on for the next generation. And we have the chance to turn this thing around. And we have the chance to develop new drugs that will save millions of lives. But it requires people to understand the problem so that we can all come up with a solution. Dr. McCarthy says one problem is testing new drugs. In his book, Superbugs, he details past horrific, unethical drug trials in other countries, even here in the U.S., that severely harmed people. Because of those mistakes, new, stringent rules governing drug testing are now in place to ensure the utmost safety and protection for the patients. Testing drugs is no simple task. Um, when I want to introduce any new drug into a hospital, um, I have to study it to make sure it works. And to do that, I have to get the approval of an institutional review board. This is essentially an ethics committee that looks at the drug, looks at the information that we know about it, and says, is this safe? Is this something that we should expose patients to? In some cases, the committee says, no, this is not worth it. We don't want to put patients at risk. And at other times, they say, yes, absolutely, this is something that could benefit patients. But the good thing for um, patients to know is that there is this firewall, that, that there is this committee that is looking out for your best interests. They are not researchers who are studying drugs. They are simply an unbiased group who are there to make sure that you are not put in harm's way. The challenge there is that they could sometimes cause a hurdle for us when we're trying to study a new drug, especially if it's one that I want to start studying yesterday. And I can't start it for six months because the committee has a lot of questions. So anytime we're introducing a new drug, whether it's an antibiotic or a chemotherapy or a new drug for heart disease, there are going to be strict limitations on how we can study it. And that's ultimately a good thing. After the lengthy approval process comes another huge hurdle. We'll tell you about that when we come back. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it. I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. And ministering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. One of the reasons we aren't seeing many new antibiotics is money. Pharmaceutical companies count on recouping the money they spend on the front end when doctors prescribe their new drug after it's available to the public. But when it comes to antibiotics, these companies often don't get the payoff they need. 
This is one of the big problems, is that the profit margin for an antifungal or an antibacterial drug is so slim that companies don't want to take a chance. They often lose $50 million if they invest in a new drug like this. And the reason is that we use these antibiotics so sparingly. Compare that with something like a lipid-lowering drug or a blood pressure drug. Those are drugs that patients take every day of their lives for years. By contrast, an antibiotic is only given in short courses as sparingly as possible. And so the companies are saying, why would we want to develop a drug that people don't want to prescribe? That makes no sense. And so what we need to think about are the incentives to get them to want to make these new drugs. And those are called push incentives and pull incentives. A push incentive might be one where we give a company a tax break to encourage them to make new drugs. A pull incentive is one where we give them a longer market exclusivity. The challenge here is that there's not a lot of interest in giving tax breaks to big pharma. Dr. McCarthy says there are some new promising antibiotics. Well, this is a fascinating issue, is that there are a number of new antibiotics that have been approved. Uh, and in fact, in 2018, we saw a variety of new antibiotics to treat superbugs. The part people don't know is that the market for these drugs is so bad that some of the companies that make the drugs file for bankruptcy shortly after their drug is approved. And that's kind of hard to believe, that you would spend tens of millions of dollars to develop a drug, it finally gets approved, it's finally available to patients, and the company that makes it has to file for bankruptcy. The reason for that is that the market for these drugs is so perilous and so tenuous that they have to market these products just right to turn a profit. But the fact of the matter is that if there are not financial incentives for these companies to make more drugs, they simply won't. Dr. McCarthy says one new drug in particular, Dalba, shows amazing promise. Dalbavancin is a drug that was approved by the FDA in May of 2014. So we've known about this drug for five years. The challenge is that nobody was really using it. And the reason is that it's extraordinarily expensive. But it comes with a very unique property, which is that a single dose can stay in your system for weeks. So that if you come to the emergency room anticipating that you're going to be hospitalized for 10 days for an intravenous antibiotic treatment, we can now totally change that and give you a single dose and send you on your way. Um, and that's something that's very powerful but it also comes with some risks. There are patients who need to be hospitalized for monitoring. And so the idea of giving a sick patient um, a drug and saying, okay, you're good to go home, is not something that's always easy to do. And so what we wanted to study with Dalbavancin is how we could do this in a responsible way and we could prevent future infections by keeping patients out of the hospital, getting them back to their normal lives. And that's ultimately what I chose to write about, is how can we do this in a way that um, benefits everyone involved. Up next, what you can do to stay safe. It's the new Superbook Bible app. It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy to understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta da! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Young people, millennials, are flocking to church. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. Come home to the Southern Gospel Station from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites. CBN Southern Gospel, available now at CBNRadio.com. Woohoo! Hi, Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! No super balls, man. 
come and... Oh, sorry, pardon me, sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. As we've heard, superbugs pose a major health threat, but some people are at greater risk than others. Well, superbugs are all around us. The most important thing that you can do is know what your risk level is. So you could start by asking your doctor, am I a patient who has an impaired immune system? Am I somebody who has a normal immune system? Do I have a medical condition that would predispose me to these things? Or am I on a medication that could weaken my immune system? If the answer is no to all of that and you have an intact immune system, then your risk is very low. Um, I have an intact immune system. I go into the hospital every day treating patients who have superbug infections, and I'm confident that I'm going to walk out without an infection. Now, by contrast, I have patients, family members, who are receiving chemotherapy. Their immune system is wiped out. They are at high risk for all different types of infections. Many patients don't recognize what bucket they fall into of being somebody who has a very weakened immune system, a moderately weakened, or a totally intact immune system. So starting there and understanding your risk level will help you navigate this world where superbugs are everywhere. There are a number of ways to boost your immune system, such as stress reduction, sleep, and improving the gut microbiome. Probiotics are one of the things patients ask me about the most. And I've learned in my career um, that patients have very, very different feelings on these things. A lot of patients swear by them, and I'm fine with patients taking them. Uh, whether or not they are going to help is something that is of active investigation in the medical community. Um, I think they have helped. They've helped a lot of people. I've also seen patients who have tried them and didn't get helped by them. Um, but probiotics are really one of the great ways that we can help our microbiome, which is the collection of bacteria that live inside of all of us. And we're finding that that microbiome is tied to all different types of diseases, from Alzheimer's to diabetes, heart disease. And so we're trying to figure out what are the best probiotics? Are there ones that will really help people in a durable fashion? And are there some that are just being marketed as a possible cure for a disease but don't actually help? And so one of the other angles to the fight against superbugs is identifying what are the probiotics that will help patients the most. If you'd like to learn more about probiotics and how to boost your gut health, log on to CBNNews.com and check out our entire Healthy Living episode about how to build a better gut, featuring my interviews with experts from the Cleveland Clinic, Johns Hopkins, the Mayo Clinic, and more. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Healthy Living. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.